Hello and welcome to Little Willy Things. This is episode 14. Um, today is May 31st, right? 2018. Um, and it is so nice to have you joining us today. My name is Wendelica Klein. And my name is Wendelica Klein also. <laughs> I am Wendelica Ann Klein. And I am Wendelica Joy Klein. <laughs> and here comes Tony. You can hear his nails clicking on the, on the floor. Okay, you can find me on social media as Little Willy Things. Um, I am on Ravelry and Etsy, and you can find some of my patterns on Nitpicks as well if you type Wendelica Klein into the search bar. Um, let's see. Today, we are going to start talking about... Coffee? Coffee. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Today, uh, since it's been getting... Well, the weather was getting really nice, and then today it started raining. But anyway, I am having some cold brew coffee. This is um, a Guatemalan Hue Hue Tenango that I brewed, or I, I roasted mm, a week ago, week and a half ago. I don't remember what day I roasted mm -hmm. this on. And I am having it with French vanilla Tarani syrup and some whole milk. And it's just wonderful. I love it. If you are interested in trying some fresh roasted coffee, let me know. I will set you up. I do have um, a few coffee list listings on Etsy in my Etsy shop. Little Woolly Things on Etsy. So um, that's where you can find that if you would like to check it out. Now, let's see. It's been uh, about a month since I podcasted last. It's been way too long and we've had way too much going on, which is why it's been so long since we recorded a podcast. Um, end of the school year, we had orchestra concert that we um, all performed in, the kids and I did. Um, what else? My older daughter, who is in college, um, was given an award for excellence in her Spanish studies, so that was really exciting. Um, uh, what else have we had going on? We went on the British Cape. Oh, we did go on vacation last weekend on a um, church staff family retreat, which was lots of fun. We went down to Langlois, which is a little town on the South Oregon coast, and we stayed in a place that used to be um, called the Millard School, and it was a um, preparatory program for students who were trying to get into um, military academies, like West Point. And um, there was a lot of really neat historical information about the family that ran that school when it was in operation as a school. Um, so anyway, you can look up the Millard School if you're interested in some Southern Oregon history. Um, it was a beautiful place. There were so many flowers. Mm -hmm. They done have done wonderful things with the grounds. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, what was your favorite part? Um, I liked um, all of it. Just she just liked all of it. It was fun. Um, the cabins are bunk room style, so we all slept in one big open room with these um, futons, with uh, dressing screens separating them. There was a, a table in the center of the room with um, a water cooler, and there was an old, old chest with a record player and a stack of old records on it. It was really kind of neat. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Let's move on to... What are we talking about next, Joy? Uh, F-O-S. F-O's. 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 No. Do you know what F-O's stands for? Uh, I forgot. Finished objects. Finished. finished objects. What do we have for finished objects to show off? Oh, I have a pair of socks that I finished, but I'm not going to show them because they're dirty. Dirty? <laughs> I, I wore them, and they're nasty looking, so I'm not going to show them off. Um, oh, I do have uh, a few other things to show off, though. I have been working, oh, no, I'm going to talk about that last. Okay, <laughs> sorry if I'm a little scattered. It's been over a month since I recorded a podcast, and I think it shows. Anyway, I'm going to show off what I am wearing here, because this is um, 
has been a whip. It feels like it's been a, uh, I've been working on it forever and ever and ever. I started thinking about this design, this project, a year ago, and I finally got it done. So I am so, so pleased with it. This is called Literally Over the Top, and um, you can't really see it because the camera is too close. Let me move things a bit so I can get a little bit farther back. I did some modifications to this. I'm going to step on, on my tippy toes. Uh, I don't know if you can see. I did some short rows to add length to the, um, the back side here. And what else did I do? Uh, oh, I used a DK weight yarn from Universal Yarn Co. Let's see if I can get this set where it needs to be again. So that was rough. Anyway, um, Universal Yarn um, Sea Spray in their DK weight. It is 100% cotton yarn. And because the pattern was written for fingering weight yarn, I had to um, knit up a swatch, and then I washed it and dried it. I threw it in the washer and I threw it in the dryer. And then I checked the gauge on it. And, um, cause you know, in my house, someone's gonna end up throwing this in the dryer, whether I like it or not. So anyway, that was how I did my gauge swatch. Um, and then I did all of my calculations off of the numbers from my gauge swatch. Um, the only thing that I did not take into account when I redid all of the numbers in the pattern was the width of the neckline here. I didn't adjust that part of the pattern and so the neckline was like way out to here. <laughs> and I put it on and it just gaped in the front and it was really disappointing. So um, I just stitched two inches on this side and two inches on this side. So I actually took in four inches of the neckline and gave it a little more sleeve than it had originally. <laughs> And um, I, I like the way it fits. I was going for a looser sort of fit. Um, I think the pattern is supposed to be more, a little more form fitting, more like a, you know, a skinny little summer top. But um, I wanted it to fit more like a shell. And it is pretty much what I was going for. So I'm really happy with it. Um, the only thing that I did not anticipate is the striping that I got with this yarn. Um, in the skein, it didn't look like it was going to stripe. It really didn't. But then when I started knitting with it, uh, it did. And I probably should have alternated skeins, but I did not. And so I got stripes. But that's all right. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, I might make another one of these. I don't know. It's very comfortable. I've been wearing this all day and I have not been too warm. <laughs> Even though it's a bulky kind of a, you know, a DK weight fabric, the cotton breathes nicely and it does have a lace pattern. So it's um, got some extra ventilation built into it and I like it a lot. So I have one more FO. Yours is not finished yet, right? Okay. Joy is working on a project right now, but it is not yet done. She can show it off when we do whips, right? We need one more thing. One more thing, okay. And so, let's see my else. other FO is here in my old knitting bag. This actually used to be my diaper bag when my youngest was a baby. And um, it was made by one of my Etsy friends. Um, and her Etsy shop was called Imagine Nana Designs. Um, she made this according to my specifications. It, um, it's, it's a really cool bag. It's falling apart now because I've had it for so long and I've used it for everything. But anyway, back to, back to FOs, right? This is a baby hat for my new grandson. And it is so fluffy. Um, I held two different yarns together. And I'm not sure if I kept the ball bands or not, because, you know, that would be too bright. Um, I do know that I got these yarns from Hobby Lobby. And they were in their baby yarn section, but I can't remember what they were called. I might be able to look back and see. If I can find the names of these yarns, I will um, put it in the show notes or put it down at the bottom of the screen here. 
Um, so I made the baby hat. And then I also made one, two, three, four, five, six baby socks, all out of that same yarn. And since it's a self-striping, um, they none of them are exact matches <laughs> because the striping sequence is too large for that. Um, but I figured it might be kind of nice to just have a set of socks that my daughter can just pick two at random and they'll all match, they'll all go together. I do not have the drawstrings yet in these. I'm going to do little I-cord drawstrings to tie right around the ankle at the bottom of the ribbing and that will help hold them on the baby's feet so he cannot kick them off. Okay, so those are my FOs. And I wanted to do that one last because I have another thing that I'm making for my grandson out of that same yarn that I have not finished yet. So that works us into, what's the next section? Whips. Whips. Okay, so this strange looking whip <laughs> is going to be a teddy bear. <laughs> he just doesn't have any ears yet and he doesn't have a face yet. Um, but he's pretty much just a tube <laughs> with some seams sewn to make him have arms and legs and there's a little um, increase and decrease to make him have his little rotund belly I just love that I think it turned out really cute <laughs> and I can't wait to um, get some ears on him and get a face I just haven't figured out exactly how I want to shape the ears so um, that's why I haven't quite finished him yet but uh, he was kind of a um, spur of the moment, kind of a whim while we were driving down to the the retreat center in Langlois. So, um, yeah, I didn't even have a plan to make this guy. I just had extra yarn and thought, hey, I'm in a bus and we're traveling and I've got yarn and I'm tired of making baby socks. So this is what I did. What? Three hour drive. Three hour drive. And we actually did it down there and back and then down again and back again because um, <laughs> because you can't take the entire pastoral staff um, away for a retreat over the weekend. Um, it just doesn't work. Somebody has to be there to do things um, on weekends. And there was a memorial service that, of course, all of the pastors were involved in. So we went down on Friday, and then we spent the night was it Friday? Yes. Yep. Went down Friday, spent the night. Saturday morning, we got up and had breakfast, got back in the bus, drove all the way back home, did the memorial service, jumped back in the bus, drove all the way back to the retre retreat center, <laughs> spent one more night, <laughs> and then got up Sunday morning and cleaned everything up, had breakfast, cleaned everything up, and then... I like the gazebo. We did. We had a church service up in the, the little gazebo um, on the top of the hill above the retreat center, and that was fun. It was really neat. Um, a neat view from up at the top of the hill. You could see down across um, into these, these valleys and, and more hills and things, and there were sheep on the hills, and the, you could see out to the ocean, and it was just really cool. Really, a, really a gorgeous place. Okay. Do you? Oh, it's your turn to show off your whip. It's not the only with three legs. You, well, it's okay. You can show it off with three legs. I have a bunch of ends. I'm making an elephant. Thing with the thing. And it only has three legs and a bunch of ends, but. Well, ends will get finished in eventually. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty cute. Yeah, just pull, pull it back just a little bit more so they can see like, all of it. Like that. Yep, so it's a finger puppet, right? Finger puppet. Yay, and it's going to be an elephant. It's going to be an elephant. It's going to have a little nose. And pretty cute. And some big old elephant yep. ears. Big elephant ears. Yep. <laughs> so she just started that this morning, and she's made very good progress on it. It's very cool. Okay, so what's next, Joy? Stash something or other. <laughs> I don't know. Stash Enhancement, a.k.a. Acquisitions. Um, I don't normally buy all that much yarn, 
but I was feeling like I had all these projects in my um, on my list that I really really wanted to make and they've been sitting in my queue since last year like this top and I really wanted to get going on them but buying yarn online um, sometimes when things arrive they're not exactly the way you imagined they might be a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter weight or the colors are a little bit different so um, I bought more yarn than I normally do just to make sure that I had colors that were going to work and the right weight and stuff like that and and some of the stuff that I got was great and some of it I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use but I will show you um, so the first thing I am going to show you is this one that I got at Michael's um, I think most of y'all are probably familiar with Michael's it's our local big box uh, craft store and this is a red heart yarn called it's a wrap it is 50% cotton 50% acrylic and it's really fine get a little bit closer so you can see it maybe um, it is a very fine yarn so what does it say it says super fine and they suggest a size 2 US needle which is a 2.75 millimeter um, and they say that will be 30 stitches and 40 rows to 4 inches by 4 inches um, so this is called the colorway is called Western Occidental and I really want to turn this into a um, like a crocheted um, swingy kind of a vest I think that's what I want to do with it I love the colors I think they would go with um, a lot of different outfits and so I just thought that would be fun it this was a total impulse buy um, so we'll see we'll see if I end up making something with this I um, I actually have been searching Ravelry and Pinterest for the last couple of weeks looking for a pattern for what I have kind of envisioned in my head and I'm not finding it and it really surprises me that I'm not finding this type of a pattern available so that means I might end up having to write it myself um, because that's what happens when you can't find what you want you make it right mm -hmm. yep it's good to know how to make things okay um, the next thing I want to show you is, is this, oh yes this is my order from webs yarn um, which is yarn.com online I got four skeins of Cascade Yarns Heritage Sock. This is a 7525, and it doesn't have, I think, I think on their website they call it wine. Um, on the label it says it's color number 5663. So, I have four skeins of this, and I love this color. I feel like it's getting a little bit blown out with the lighting here. Um, but I am going to make the Leora tank with this, which is a v-neck tank top with a little lace detail inset into the V and then it also has a lace detail that runs under the arms and up the sides of the um, the shoulder straps so that is going to be a really really fun one and I actually I guess I should have shown this off with the whips I barely got it started I just got it cast on oh gosh an hour ago <laughs> so so that's as much as I have done there of that project. And yes, I see it. I have another daughter just off camera trying to give me hints of things I need to do. Okay, so this is the um, gauge swatch that I knitted up for my Leora tank. And I really am happy with how drapey this is. I think this is going to be a good gauge. It's a little bit see-through, but um, I think it's going to be great for a summer top. This makes me happy. Alrighty. So, there's my web order. Alright, I also ordered some yarn from Knit Picks. 
And I'm, I've been in a very blue kind of mood lately. What are you getting, Joy? Hmm? You need some pink? Oh, okay. Alrighty. You know what? Um, there's something else in there that I want to so get to. So while Joy is looking for pink yarn in my room, um, I will show you what I got from Knit Picks. Okay, so first of all, I have to show you um, a skein that I already had, which is this one, the Knit Picks Stroll Gradient in the colorway called Summer Camp. And I bought this because I was really intrigued with the, the gradient color shift. And um, I thought, oh, I'll just get one skein and see what I can do with it. And I got one skein and I thought, what am I going to do with one skein, right? <laughs> so it's been sitting in my stash for a while. Um, and I finally thought, you know what? I just need to go to Knit Picks because their colors are probably going to match this better than if I try and buy a yarn from another company. So I thought if I got this stroll gradient in See You Later, S-E-A, that might kind of go with this as kind of a fade. And then I also got, let's see if I can balance these on my hand. I don't know, my hands are small. I got that and that, and then I got this one which is Stroll Fingering in their Inverness Tonal, which is a deep blue, almost black with some brighter blue. Really cool. And so I thought that if I went from the yellow to the light blue, to this light blue, medium blue, to the dark blue, to the Inverness, that make, might make kind of a cool, um, gradient effect. Maybe. We'll see. And I also got this one, which is another um, stroll fingering. This is their Pacific Tonal. Um, because I wasn't sure if the Inverness was going to be the right tones, or if I wanted to do it with the Pacific. But now the Pacific looks like it's the wrong blue. It's it would go better with this one, my shirt. Anyway, I think that'll work. See, I ended up buying an extra skein because I wasn't sure which one of these I actually wanted. Extra skein? Extra skein. <laughs> no, not to worry. Christmas is coming. Okay. Um, what else do I have? Let me check my, my notes here. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys, while Joy is busy working on her elephant still, is... Um, I'm working on the last part. I'm working on the... Wait, no. Still need the ears. Still need to do the ears. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am um, going to show you a package that I got uh, about a week ago or a week and a half ago. Uh, I think I talked about it on my last podcast. This is the fundraiser um, yarn package by Melissa from Honeybee Knits. And it included this really cute Notions pouch, which has um, the theme is Sherlock. Let's see, there's a violin on there. We got Sherlock and Holmes running. Um, anyway, just really cute Sherlock theme fabric. Is somebody here? Huh? Oh, hey, my husband's home. So the, um, the Notions bag was made by Georgian Plaza of Stitching Plaza. Here's her car. It also came with a progress keeper from Melissa. Oh, here it is. It's purple. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> there. <laughs> and the how, dogs. How many are... people watching this? Um, could be a hundred. Could be a hundred. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice to meet y'all. <laughs> I'm Eric, by the way. 
<laughs> so here is the yarn that came in the package from Melissa. It is a beautiful purple <laughs> tonal um, because purple is the color for esophageal cancer awareness. And this one is called Sourir, I think is what she named the colorway. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It has some really nice speckling going on in here. And um, this one is going to have to have just the right project. And in that package was also a um, download code for a sock pattern called Stand Up. And that is by Lisa Mott. Um, she says, the beginning of the pattern, when I first started playing around with designing these socks, cancer was on my mind a lot. So many friends and family affected by this horrible disease, lives forever changed. I needed a creative outlet for what I was feeling and was inspired by the arrows on the Stand Up to Cancer logo. As I worked on fine-tuning the pattern, I thought about all the other horrible things like diseases, bullying, mental illness that people must battle every day. The idea of standing up became the driving force behind the design that each stitch knitted was a promise to stand up and lend strength to those fighting the unseen and sometimes seen battles every day. That in the end, we can all pull up our socks and stand up together. So, I will be making these socks at some point. Not right away. I have some other projects in the works, but that will happen eventually. Okay, so what else do I have to show off? Hmm. Look at that. Two pages of show notes. Um, okay, so I also ordered... Pardon me while I pick up yarn off the floor. I also ordered a couple skeins of special... Or No, I ordered one. I ordered one skein from Dragon Horde Yarn. This one is so cool with all the colors speckled into it. This is the Lore Sock Base, 85% wool on, 15% nylon, wool on, 85% superwash wool, 15% nylon, and it has some really gorgeous speckles in there, beautiful colors. It is called Tree Sprite. And this one is a Malabrigo. I'm not sure if I have shown this off yet or not. I love all of the beautiful browns in there. This is Arbol, and I bought this at my local yarn shop. And I was hoping that these two would pair nicely with this one. And this is by Mitchell's Creations, and it is their, her Dreaming of Rhinebeck colorway. So I'm not sure how I would put that. Probably like that. So, that's got some promise. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that your elephant trunk? Joy's getting close to having her elephant trunk. Mm -hmm. Joy just needs pink on it. Mm -hmm. Just needs the pink on it. Just needs the pink on it. Awesome. You're going to have it almost done by the time we get done. Okay, I think that's all I have to show off. Wait, we turn off the camera and then turn it back on. Mm-hmm. Better hurry. When I was done. <laughs> anyway, I guess I will start closing, and if she gets that finished very, very soon, I'll put a little snippet of a video at the end. Thank you so much for watching, and we will talk to you next time. Bye. Okay, this is my elephant finger puppet. It has a bunch of ends sticking out, but all the pieces except for the ears are stuck on. It's all the pink at the end of the nose. I think it's gonna be good. That's supposed to be level. Can you hear me? No, anyone can hear you right now. <laughs> Does it feel level? I can't see. I don't know. I think it's a little bit crooked. Let's see if I can fix it. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Where are 
are you doing? <laughs> Sixteen months it later, I thought I was a is it level with my nose? <laughs> I'm gonna put this on the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny.